Hi and welcome to my channel. It's Rebecca, also known as 4 Kids at 147. Happy 18th of June. How quick is this month going at all? I think it helps that we've got something to do each day. But let's have a look at which one we're going for today. Where are we headed? Number nine. Oh, we are staying over the right side of this painting. That's for sure. So let me get my little clips. Make sure they're the right way round so that the flat part goes against my easel. Because after all, that is the idea. And let's have a look. Oh, we've got some purple in this one. Nice bit of purple. Let me just get this one lined up. So that I am keeping covered the um, diamonds underneath and let's go with the firm favourite of starting in the bottom corner. Now I'm working with another pen that I have got from Lathe, I can't even say it. <laughs> Lays and Lathe Works. Um, I will pop a link to their Etsy shop. They have a link on there to their Facebook page. I'm pretty sure they do. So one link will lead to another if there isn't anything showing in the shop. Quite often, even when they do put stuff on the shop, it does sell out pretty quick. But they do custom orders and stuff through Facebook. So you don't have to wait to grab a chance if that it's not one of those that you sort of have to keep waiting. You can get yourself on the order list. Pick a blank, pick a shape. This is the three bump. It's what I like. I do have an everlasting tip in this and then I have a plastic straightener. Because as I say, I did only purchase two straighteners. But yeah, I have, I have a few pens from them. I think there's still another one that needs to make an appearance. So questions, Shimmy Dancer says, do you have to glue the stretcher bars onto your painting because the diamonds make the painting so heavy? Yeah, I think that's what Margaret's suggestion was, was that with some of hers, because they are heavier, that glue helps it to stay in place. Because more often than not, the sort of the bars that you can get for the top and the bottom of your painting, quite often clip together or many of them clip together with magnets. Now I have a couple from Ikea that aren't magnets, they actually have a clip, and I don't know if they'd need the tape or not. But those that are magnets, you know, they're made for holding something that's paper. And while they are, you know, nice quality and quite often, you know, magnets that will clip together through a canvas, You've also got to remember that the canvas itself is thicker than paper, which means the magnet strength is not going to be as strong through paper, through a canvas, sorry, as it would be through paper. And I think that's why it helps if you put that extra little bit of tape. But the easiest way to try or to find out, you know, whether the ones you've got are strong enough is, is to pop you know one of the bars across the top of your painting and then just just give your painting a little bit of a shake while holding the bar and see if it moves and if it moves then tape will help and if you're unsure or worried put tape on it anyway because it doesn't do any harm <laughs> take that extra little step why not um, the guest has asked, does your daughter do something like the green shack? So in parks across Canada, there are green shacks that provide arts and crafts in the summer. So it's like parks in cities. <coughs> um, it's not quite like that. It's not so much of a, an activity, you know, that anybody can drop into, you know, and, and spend an hour or so and then and then leave. She does more of a, a club, 
so it's more of a youth club parents sign their children up for it and then they do activities the likes of most of the day so there's a few of them there and I think there's different areas you know there'll be sports there'll be a music room there'll be crafts they've done tie-dye before that sort of thing and it's basically just to keep the kids entertained while the parents are at work and schools are shut so that sort of thing it can vary you know how many children they have each day and I'm not quite sure of the age range that it covers but I think it's more those that are in infants and junior school so those that maybe can't necessarily be at home on their own and yeah she does sort of the sort of different shifts that they do there because I think they run it from about eight till about six maybe even seven um, but yeah she enjoys she enjoys going and doing doing that in half terms if the half term in, in the council that the youth group's in or youth club's in matches the half terms at the school she's working <coughs> because sometimes from one council district to another the half terms can change sometimes they can even change in the same town depending on if it's a Church of England school or a state school um, that was that was always fun um, when the local high school had different holidays to to the primary school always made it entertaining but most schools that are, are close to others try to keep the same just because it makes life a lot easier for us parents. Um, Celine says she's enjoying the whip and chats as much as the December advent. Thank you so much for doing it. It's my pleasure. I am really enjoying it. It is getting, it's getting a diamond painting done. And it's making me do a bit of diamond painting each day. Which is, is something I enjoy doing anyway. So it's a nice little little push and it gets me another complete another painting ticked on completed oh and I forgot to mute my laptop again um she says will you be incorporating your new logbook with future videos such as kitting up down writing down a stash new diamond paintings etc that is something I'm looking to do I really um like the logbook. I should hope so. I helped. I helped. <laughs> I helped Megan design it. Um, yeah, I am hoping to incorporate it. Of course, I'm one of those people that thinks, oh, really? I want everything in there, including ones that I've done. But having been a diamond painter now for over three years, it really isn't practical to try I think it would just take far too much time to try and get every diamond painting that I've ever done into the logbook or if I do I think it's something that I should think about doing at a later date rather than straight away and I think I should just enjoy using the logbooks for paintings that I'm doing now and adding in the details as much as I can for paintings I have and I'm doing and then if I do want to go back and add any more in then I can because there are of course many that I have passed on given away and I'm talking completed not even so much just talking about the, the you know the ones that have gone in giveaways I wouldn't count them as being mine in the first place but there are many that I have gifted diamond paintings and and passed them on so finding them to do pictures and stuff after the fact might not be the easiest but maybe I could start cataloging a few around the house and definitely cataloging my stash would would be a good idea because at the moment I only have that recorded down in the app 
the Tiny Decisions app and all my stash is sort of split up across whether it's a large painting, a small painting, um, and whether it's a special. That's how my Decision Maker app is split up. So yeah, I think it is something I'm going to incorporate. I haven't actually started using it yet. I just haven't had the time to sort of knuckle down and go, okay, how am I going to start incorporating this? But yeah, it's definitely something I'm thinking of for future videos. Even if I just start doing it on, you know, paintings that I'm starting to kit up and starting to work on. Um, and then add more as I go along. But yes, I will get there. Um, Dolphine the Witch, she said uh, she loves watching my videos. Thank you. And she says, what do you do with the when the wax goes like Swiss cheese? Um, I still pinch the bits. So let me see. I've got a piece of piece of wax here or a tub of wax here. So you can see I have, if it will focus, I have some Swiss cheese here, but then I have gaps because when I've got a pen that has only just started to lose its sticky, then quite often I will I will just break off these extra little bits of the cheese. So it, I'm not putting a full circle in. I'm just getting a little bit more wax and pushing it in. Um, and I'll go through a, comp a complete little square. And I've probably only been through about four or five of them in total. I, it is not very often that I have to fill up that pot with wax. It lasts me for ages. Even when I am doing a lot like these whip and chats where I do seem to be filling up, you know, replacement pens and pens with new tips. And I've probably put too much wax in this now. Uh, pens with new tips and all sorts. I, I still find that I don't go through too much wax. And maybe it's because I do just pinch the bits in the middle. So all your little gaps... I use those when it just needs a mini top up so that I don't end up overfilling it by too much wax. And then I use, you know, the, the clear parts that I can make holes in when it's a new pen tip more often than not. Or if, you know, the wax has got covered in a coating off some dodgy diamonds or I've done quite a few AB diamonds and it seems to be having a problem. And then sometimes I will empty the nib of wax and then I'll try again and start from a fresh one. Uh, Josie Cook says, will your new channel have the same intro slash end music or will it be different? It will more than likely be different. I'm going to try and do a few little changes between the two channels, but not too many in the fact that it is still me and it will still be me making the videos. But yeah, I'll probably have a different type of intro just for a change, because why not? I think Bobby's going to have a little mess with some software and see if he can create me an intro. Um, that works but maybe some elements will stay we're going to see what we can come up with but as you may be able to tell that's not quite hit the top of the priority list yet it'll need to we've not got long <laughs> um, Peggy loves the pen I used on the 15 I'm not quite sure what that one was yet I think they're all merging into one but I do love all of my pens so I'm with you on that one. Um, and she says, what's the difference between the everlasting tip and the tip on the average DP pen? So on a normal diamond painting pen, you tend to have a piece of plastic and then it has a brass tip inside it. So the little tiny piece that you'll see on the end is made of brass. And 
it can, or at least I'm pretty sure it's made of brass, but it is a softer metal. So sometimes if you, you know, maybe had a diamond that you were trying to squeeze into a gap and press really hard, or maybe you use the edge of your pen tip to try and pick a diamond up off the canvas that you'd put in the wrong place, or just from general, you know, usage, putting it back in, in a in a pot at the end of the day and getting another one out can cause little nicks in the tip so it can bend in on itself a little bit and quite often you won't really notice but maybe you'll find that it's not as easy to place diamonds or so, you know this diamond's giving you a little bit more aggro than another and quite often if you have a close look at the tip of your pen it can be dented um, whereas with the everlasting tips because they are I'm pretty sure they're stainless steel they're tougher they don't tend to bend out of shape now there's a couple of different types of tips you can get so one type I do have um, you can replace the brass part with a stainless steel silver part um, and in effect it just let me see if I can find one okay they're both everlasting tips if I got one that's a normal tip here we go so just to show you this has a brass tip and I'm not sure if it's going to focus again but this one has a brass tip this one's in pretty good condition it is actually a little bit misshapen and I don't know if it's going to focus. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit and it might focus a little bit better if I bring it up to the camera, or maybe it won't. <laughs> um, no, it's not helping. But it has a brass tip in the end and it is a little bit misshapen. It's not got a full on dink in it, but it's not a perfect circle. So you can get some everlasting tips that you just switch it out. So you pull out the brass one with a pair of pliers and put in that one. And this one is still in a perfect circle. And then you can get ones that are full metal. Now the benefit with the full metal is of course plastic can move a little bit more. So sometimes you can feel the movement in the plastic when you're placing down the diamonds. And it's only ever slightly. And I didn't really notice it slash think it was a problem until somebody mentioned that they prefer these tips because of that movement. So I'm sorry if I'm doing this to somebody else, but as soon as I knew about that movement, I recognised it and I saw it happening. Um, and it became more noticeable to me that, yeah, sometimes when you're, you know, trying to squeeze a diamond in a gap, I could feel it move, I could feel the plastic pen move, but it really is a lot of personal preference. Okay, I think I'm going to try and fill in a few of these little gaps before I do these blocks, though those two are in blocks. Let me get this D and R done because they're darker and it's easier to miss the dark colours on this painting for some reason, or at least it is for me, it's easier to miss those, those small darker sections than it is to, to miss the lighter ones. Got a few up here. So the next question, Dolphine says, how do you hold your camera when you film? <clears throat> so my camera is attached to a camera sort of mount clip system. It actually screws into the bottom of the camera um, and it has a couple of adjustments that you can do this way and then you know forwards and backwards and then it is clipped to a shelf on my that is screwed into the wall behind me it's a it's a thin shelf 
but it is one I have on the on the wall above my desk. It's screwed into it's clipped onto that and it is in that position permanently and I just zoom in or out according to what I need for the video. Um, yeah, it's, it was an inexpensive camera mount. The camera may have cost more, but it's an inexpensive mount. And the, the camera I have is a Canon G7X Mark II, I think. And it does have a little flip screen. So while the camera is pointing down and is filming down, I can lift the screen up, which means I can see what's in shot which is very handy when I'm when I'm zooming in. I might need to move whatever I'm showing you guys further over. And occasionally, of course, I'll end up pushing the easel a different way. And it helps me to bring that back in. Right, now I'm gonna go for E now. I think I've done the ones that I was likely to miss round here. And I need to scroll up on my computer to see the next question. Cheryl says, happy anniversary to you and Mr. Four Kids and happy birthday to your dad. Um, have you ever tried clear museum gel rather than wax? Oh, she purchased it on Amazon US based on another recommendation and she's not gone back to wax since. No, I haven't tried that. To be honest, most of the time, the reason I've not tried something else is partly, partly laziness. I know that a few years ago, there was a whole, you know, let's find something better than wax. It seemed to be, you know, the mission of quite a few people. Which, which I completely get, you know, that wax sometimes will test my patience. But on the whole, wax hasn't done me bad. It hasn't been, you know, the, the bane of my diamond painting journey or anything like that. So I figured, you know, I'd just carry on doing videos on things that seem to bother me more or carry on doing the things that were nice about diamond painting. I wasn't interested in testing lots of different things to find something else for wax, not when so many other people were. It's like, go find, go find out what others are doing. I'll, I'll keep plodding on. It's only recently because I think there's been a lot more comments about people using glue dots and how well they're working and the fact that while I do have some bigger glue dots which I could cut down they are something that's very easy for me to get hold of it's not something I have to order from one particular place or I have to go look in and order in and wonder you know is one product better than another product a glue dot's a glue dot doesn't seem to have mattered what brand of glue dot and I think that's what's making me try it plus I have found that while we don't get that hot in summer for it to make a huge difference I have noticed while doing this June whip and chat whether it be the fact that the you know the British summer has sort of turned up and I say sort of because it's still been cloudy even if we've had nice days or whether it's because I've been using quite a few pens that I may not have used for a while but the wax has been more annoying in these videos <laughs> than it has than I normally notice or it ever has been one or the other and I think that's what's made me try glue dots. But it is nice to know the other things that are out there and available. Because some people don't get on with glue dots either. So if you don't get on with glue dots, try clear museum gel. Rather than wax. 
Oh, Jessica on the video from the 15th asked to show what the glow in the bar boom, glow in the dark part looked like. Next whip along. So I did that in yesterday's video. Because I was you oh, see, it's even dropping the diamonds now. I'm sure it's got something to do with these quality of diamonds because it has not been that hot today. Um, I did show that in yesterday's video. So if you haven't seen it yet, have a look at yesterday's. And I showed the glow in the dark sections and the glow in the dark pen. And I will do it every now and then. Every few videos I will show the glow in the dark. The only reason I don't do it too often is sometimes my lights can cause, you know, a little bit of a, a flash when they come back on and the camera readjusts and I don't want to affect anybody who might be a bit more sensitive to that. So I'll always give warning, but I don't tend to do it every video. So I've got a few ABs here in this very dark purple. I think there may be a few more. In fact, there's definitely going to be some white I need to do up here. I also needed to push that one in, but it doesn't like it when you push down on this. There's definitely a few more. Let's see if I can do all the ABs. So what else do I have that's an AB? I have 996, which is Z. Oh yes, I have a, have a bigger section than I realised. So let's do those while I've got this pen out. Hello, hello Queen Crafting. She also says being a pen snob isn't much of a choice to her due to a condition that she has. Um, so she's found that if she uses a regular size pen, it can actually cause her pain, which we definitely don't want. Um, she did know a wider pen was going to be a requirement. She didn't have to get more than one or buy pretty ones, but she did justify it to hubby by that she was trying to find the one that was right for her. Well, I hope you definitely have a few pretty ones in there as well, because you deserve pretty as much as you deserve a, pain, a pen that doesn't give you pain. You deserve both. So make sure that you have pretty ones that don't cause you pain as well, or at least one. My mum doesn't get the reason for needing more than one. So that's okay then. I will never buy her another. <laughs> she doesn't need more than the one I've already sent. Um, oh, Fee says she would love a diamond painting retreat. That's always good to know. See, Chris, you've started something now. She's been out of a job for such a long time and part-time career too. Um, oh, part-time carer, sorry, to a hobby, so it would be a lovely thing to do. Apologies, I read career, not carer. Well, I suppose they're both, they can pretty much both intertwine. Um, oh, can I try your ride today? Oh, that's awesome. Um, so Crazy Cat Lady has said, does the name change mean that the trays with four kids at 147 labels will become collector items? Yeah, it kind of does. It does mean that the, the limited, well, I say limited, there's been quite a few hundred trays have gone out with the four kids label on. But yeah, we are looking at changing the name on the trays come the 1st of July. Um, the tray design itself will still be the same because it works perfectly and I am not messing with something that works. To expand, bring something different, bring alternatives, that's fine, but I'm not changing the tray because it does exactly what I want it to do. I 
just have one more AB diamond to place and I am just going to go and fish it out of the pot because it is only one and then to push it in to the right angle because it doesn't pick it up at the right angle. Okay, let's go in for some purple. Haven't seen purple in quite a while. There was a little scattering of it here and a couple of little bits of it down here. But this is where most of it is on the painting. And I'm starting with that one because I want to get that lonely little square. Um, Rose says she's loving the June waffle. She is from, she's watching from Prospect, South Australia. Finding time every day is now something that she's going to try and do all the time. Oh, that's awesome. She said it's so therapeutic um, and she loves to diamond paint with me. Well, while I won't be doing a dip, whip and chat every single day of the year, I am glad that, you know, you and others that have mentioned it are going to try and take that time out for themselves each and every day as many days as they can and I do think sometimes that's important because life can get away from us myself included I have had a week or so where I haven't been able to get any diamond painting done and I do need to sort of give myself a little a little telling off and a little check and saying oi you're ditching your diamond painting for something else that's not you time. It's not like I've gone and gone to a spa each evening and not diamond painted instead. That might be okay. I've not done another hobby. I've just been doing stuff, normally business stuff. So it, I do hope that many people will sort of give themselves that little bit of time as many days as they can. We all know, we all know, know that life does throw stuff at us sometimes and there are going to be days that we can't, but don't let it be that many days that you forget yourself and you forget to go back to making sure that you have that time and don't think just because you haven't for however many days that it's not going to happen, carve out that time again. Uh, mops the tops she says question for you where did you go and what are your meal preferences so for our anniversary we have been here a couple of times actually I think on our anniversary or on special occasions we went to um, Miller and Carter which is a steakhouse in the UK and every time that we go me and the hobby we pretty much always order the same thing. He has a bigger appetite than me. So we order the, the sort of like a sharing, I think it's called a butcher's block, where you get, I think it's four different cuts of steak and you share. And it works absolutely perfectly because you know, a lot of stuff is, is either half and half that we share and then I'll, you know, not have one of the cut one of the cuts of steak because I'm not up for it or quite often, you know, we'll just I'll get the smaller piece and he'll get the bigger piece. Um, and we both end up getting our fill and we both end up having, you know, the right amount for us. In fact, we actually brought some ribs home for the girls this time, which was surprising to both of us that we didn't end up leaving some meat, that we did end up bringing home some meat, sorry. But we, we had dessert instead, so they do do amazing dessert. So I had my usual, again, usual from there. We don't go there, you know, all the time. It's more of a once a year or once every couple of years thing. So I definitely tend to order the same thing each time I go. But I love their sticky toffee pudding and custard. 
Oh, so nice. I want more now even saying it. <laughs> um, Linda says when she first started diamond painting, she couldn't afford to buy a pen. So she found a YouTube video that showed how to convert a ballpoint type pen into a diamond painting pen. So she had a couple of older but comfortable pens and she converted them. And they lasted her ages until she found a pen that she wanted to buy. I like that idea. Especially considering now, while I still absolutely love you know, writing stuff down and lists and all that sort of thing. I need to put more wax in this pen. Um, while it's, while I still love doing all that, a lot of the time it is sort of a day and age where you may not do that as much as we once did. And you can have, you know, really nice pens that maybe were gifted to you or you know, we're just a firm favourite that maybe have run out and you've not, you know, either had the time or the inclination to get refills for. So, yeah, that would be something that would be ideal to see if you can convert into a diamond painting pen. And then you get to use something that you, you really like and is comfortable to use and is... It's nicer than the standard pink pens. Something you can look at while you're diamond painting that makes you smile. Which is always good. Um, Diana said, uh, she said happy anniversary and then happy birthday to me dad because it was from the 15th. But she says closed captioning is a riot. Apparently, Admiral Zest has turned into Admiral Zest. Hmm. That's definitely a little bit different. <laughs> Sometimes the closed captioning can be more entertaining than what I say. Oh, Nicole said it was so nice of your dad to thank people individually for the birthday wishes. I was on the phone um, to my mum on uh, the day after my dad's birthday in Australia, so the 16th. And I happened to mention to me to my dad to have a look at the video. My mum watches anyway and reads the comments, but she hadn't quite caught up with that video due to stuff they had going on. Sometimes she does a bit of catch up. Um, but yeah, I advised my dad that he had a few birthday wishes on there. So while me and my mum were chatting on the phone, he's, he said, I'm, I'm replying to him. He said, they're all getting an individual reply. No copy and paste here, he said. <laughs> so yeah, he did go through. Um, but yeah, I do appreciate everybody that, that wished my dad a happy birthday. And he did too. Uh, Nancy says she's so thankful for this waffle. She's not sure she'd have got the tree done if she didn't take part. Well, use this as a challenge or as, you know, a, a challenge to get something finished that you want done, but you don't want to do it. Or use it as, you know, a challenge to carve out more me time. Or just use it as an excuse to do another painting. You can pick which one. Um, whatever works for you. I know there's people that are joining in, but they're not necessarily doing it, doing one painting over the course of a month. They're just working on something bigger and just doing a bit each day. Whatever works for you guys. Just, just diamond paint. <laughs> Whatever which way, whatever, you know, thing you want to do, just diamond paint. And I just managed to dunk a load of wax on my canvas. That's what I was scraping up. Oh, purple is done. I've got a lot of glow in the dark to still do. What's next? 
Cherry Tea says she loves the idea of having a diamond painting on the cover of the logbook, but she does agree it would be tough to do. She said, personally, if anyone can figure it out, that's you and the hubby. Thank you for the confidence. She says, not quite sure whether it is something that she can do. Um, it is something I'll put on the list, not so much. Well, maybe it would be as, a, as an interchangeable cover. Maybe I'll see if it's something that can be purchased as an, as an extra little add-on. I actually think it might have to be made or done slightly different to the likes of the cover and all the inserts. So it'd need to be thicker than the inserts, but not laminated like the cover. It might need to be a different form of material. Maybe material, maybe it could just work on on thicker card, I don't know. It would definitely need more time, but say I will put it on our people's wish list and we'll get to many of those wishes as soon as we can. Dependent on what they are and how big the project will depend on how soon. Bex says she purchased a an A3 light pad on Amazon using a Vipon voucher. I have heard quite a bit about Vipon as well. I haven't found a deal that's been live um, for me to sort of do a purchase and do an unboxing on it. Though if you do want some stuff, Vipon is a pretty good app from Amazon. It will give you a coupon for things on Amazon that you can sometimes get at 50%. I know some people have managed to get hold of the likes of the storage cases that hold 60 bottles. Some people have been able to get hold of those for a really good price. But it does seem to be something that quite often they only have, you know, a limited number of vouchers. So as soon as, you know, 10 people have bought one, the item will disappear from Vipon. So it seems to be that you do have to keep an eye on it a little bit more than I do. But she got it for £17.50 instead of £46.99. Good bargain. So if you have the time, um, or even if you don't, you can still check it every now and then and still potentially find a bargain. But do, I've managed to pick up three diamonds here. Oh no, I've just lost one. Um, yeah, do get the, the Vipon app and it can often give you a coupon for Amazon and that will allow you to get the item at the discounted price. But there has been a few good things on there, so... It is worth it because you never know when you're going to check the app and find your bargain. Everybody deserves a bargain. You just need to have the options available to you for when you find yours. Right, so I think that is all the diamonds done apart from my glow in the dark. Um, share for him says my husband and I were in England in the late 90s she believes it was in the Hatfield area um, and they were introduced to the historical footpaths um, while her husband was working she'd explore the area using these paths can you explain more about them are they everywhere in England do you know some of the history um, I don't know that much about them, whether they were, you know, particularly showing you certain things or taking you to certain places. There are many walks and public footpaths, especially in older and more rural areas. There are quite often 
what I suppose they'd call historical footpaths would normally be, you know, where many people walked years ago or maybe cobble paths. I'm not exactly sure what they are specifically, but there are many footpaths around the UK, especially the likes of the Lakes, which is the Lake District. We just call it the Lakes. Um, there's many, you know, walking walking routes and areas which involve you know more historic footpaths and you know trekking the dales and all that sort of stuff um but i don't know what those specific historic trails were whether it is the same thing or not it's not a lingo i'm familiar with probably just due to living in more of a busy town that's not as much of an old town. I don't tend to live in an old town if that. I mean, it, it probably is old to to many people. Um, you know, due to the fact that there are some there are some buildings in the town that are very old, but we're not as old as, you know, the likes of York and stuff. I don't think anyway. Um, we don't have our own cathedral anyway. Uh, Meg says, do you like doing more than one at a time? She has to finish one and put it away before she can start a new one. It makes it exciting to a fresh new one, she said. Oh, and she, a tray came this morning. She loves it and used it all day. Um, yeah, I constantly have more than one on the go. Sometimes I will just focus on the one. So it may be that I have a few kitted up, but one is really taking my fancy and I will do that one. Sometimes, depending on the size, till when it's finished. Sometimes it will just be until I'm like, if it's a big one, it might be that I'm, I'm a bit, hmm, I've had enough of this colour now, or I've had enough of doing a square, or whatever it may be, and I'll switch to another one. But primarily, I like to have a large painting and a small painting on the go. So not, in, not including my heaven and earth designs. My personal preference is a big painting and a small painting. I quite often like it if one is round and one is square, but it doesn't always work out that way. And I enjoy doing both, so it's not a huge deal. And I like to work on a section of my big one and then move to do, sometimes if it's a 30 by 40, I'll do about half of it. And then I'll go back to my big one and I'll do a section on that. And when I say section, I mean bigger than my cover sheet, like a strip, a strip of it. And then I'll go back and finish off the 30 by 40 de-kit that one, kit up another one, and carry on doing that other one alongside the big one. And it, it breaks up doing a big one for me. It means I'm not constantly working on a big painting. However, I have loads of big paintings. So I do need to probably, I probably need to change it up and do two large ones at the same time, because to be honest, I do get drawn to some of the really big images and I do need to get some done, but ideal world, one big, one small. So Susan says she loves how this painting's turning out. If it weren't for the drill quality that I've mentioned, she thinks she would have purchased it already. Yeah, I mean, the drill quality is not awful. But there is definitely those gaps. And if you're used to working on squares with really nice drill quality, you will notice. If you're, you know, quite, quite good at working with squares, when I say good, had quite a lot of practice of working with squares, then having the gaps isn't as much of a problem when you step back and when the painting's done, 
just doesn't give you those nice clicks like these glow-in-the-dark ones are because the drill quality on the glow-in-the-dark is better than what came in the kit. I'm not sure if it is licensed by them though. It doesn't say anything on it. Oh yes it does, sorry, I lie. It's right at the top, licensed from Zagary. I miss that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it is licensed, so whether anybody else is licensed or whether it's only from them, I don't know. Maybe the listing will say. To be honest, I didn't read it past. It's this size and it's square, and I'm like, okay, it'll look that good, that size in square, and I'm happy working on a square, and I ordered it. And that was that. I don't tend to read all the descriptions unless, unless it's something a little bit different. And it's my bad, you know, if something turns up and it's not what I was expecting, then I'll go back and read the listing and if I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake and I'll suck it up. And if I've not, then that's something for customer service to sort out. Um. Michelle Mills says, have you thought about closing the shop for a short time so you can catch up on stock so you don't have to stress about working so hard? Um, no. I, th I think the whole family is a bit of a glutton for punishment on stuff. And to be fair, I really, really enjoy working on the business side of things. Um, and I think we'd feel more guilty shutting the shop and not allowing people to you know purchase things and have a day or two wait then then we feel stressed about people having to wait a day or two for their orders to go out but I'm trying to get my work slash shop slash life balance a, li a little bit better a little bit at a time but no I think if if the shop ever closes for a short period of time it will be because there's nobody there to run it for a holiday rather than it would be um, just just to catch up. Because it, it's, it's not overwhelming at the moment. It can just occasionally take a little bit more time than we might have. But it's all good. We all pitch in together. Um, my daughter went to the post office again for me today just to save a little bit of time. Am I zoomed out enough for you to see? Look, we have a full circle on the tree. I think we have actually caught the full circle. So we have one full circle on the tree and possibly a few more, but they're hidden. Um, I wonder if we'll finish this side before we finish any more of this side. Time will tell. It's not my decision to make. It's the decision makers. But I'm enjoying it either way. I don't mind which section it picks, it picks, to be honest. I just enjoy doing it. And these might be faded from leaning on them, but I can read them, so it's all good. Anyway, that is it for today. So thank you so much for joining me yet again. Please don't forget to subscribe to both this channel and my new one coming the beginning of August, which is linked down below and I'll speak to you all again tomorrow.